Hi, Steve Sapato, and you're listening to Speaker Talks podcast. And today I have Dr. Latarsha Holden on. And uh, uh, I messed up, and so uh, I know a ton about her that you are going to love. Uh, Dr. Latarsha is most famous for empowering others to change the trajectory of their lives. So I don't know about you, but most of us would like to change our trajectory. Now, how about your children? So, Dr. Latarsha, I appreciate you for giving me for uh, messing this all up again. So, let, tell us a little bit about you, and uh, nobody's heard about you because I messed up. <laughs> well, hi, again, thank you, Steve, for having me. Yeah. Um, I'm Dr. Latarsha Holden, born and raised here in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, within the last 12, about 13 years now from the beginning of my journey, but within 12 years, I went from being homeless in the streets of Atlanta at 35 years old. I had a GED, very little work history, and I was lost and uh, and six children. So I went from being homeless in the streets of Atlanta with six children to running for city council in the 2017 election to a, from a GED to a doctorate in leadership studies. I'm now a 14 time published author and I released my first comic book last year. That's right. Tell me about the comic book again, because I thought that was fascinating. She, she's 14 times uh, author. And then she writes a comic book. You're like, well, what's up with that? <laughs> well, last year I wanted a creative way to empower the people of God that when we first went on lockdown, the, you know, I was, people was panicking. They, they'd never been in such a dark situation where they didn't know what was really going to happen. People who've been on their job for years. And so I came up with this creative way. I wrote a Christian comic book to empower people and to inspire them that God is with them, that he has not forgotten about them. So I'm excited. Comic books are expensive to do. I didn't know that when I started the project. So that was just my first one. Hopefully I'll get sponsored, you know, later on down to keep writing. But yeah, I you know what? That's a good point. And I didn't realize that either. Comic books are more expensive to produce yes. than a book book. You're like, what? What? Did, you know, you got your artist, you got all this stuff and you got. But anyway, that's fascinating that that she brought in a Christian uh, character, Christian comic book, because we talked earlier and. One of the things we said was uh, what's happened to America is because we've uh, lost respect for God. We took God out of our school systems. We took God in prayer out of everything, uh, you know, probably at the request of the 10 percenters. I always say, you know, if you took a, what we call the silent majority, most of America says it wants to have really well disciplined, well organized. And I don't not necessarily Christian children, but God fearing children, you know, whatever religion you are. And when we take that out, we deprive them of that as well as respect for the flag, not saying the Pledge of Allegiance. But that has obviously challenged us as a nation, uh, why we're so divided. And so when she mentioned that she brought this comic book in, I thought that was really cool. But she she jumped over a few things that when we were talking earlier, um, you had an abusive marriage. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, well, the reason I became homeless, um, I was married for 10 years. When I met my husband, ex-husband, he passed two years ago. Um, but when I met him, he was you didn't, you didn't kill him, did you? No, I didn't. No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but but when I met him, he I mean he the gift of ele being an electrician was in his DNA. The guy can wire up a building with his eyes closed. So he was an electrician. He started his own self-employed business, but he didn't have the mental business aspect to run it he was a talent and so i used to always give him little suggestions on how to do stuff he ignored me i guess he's like what she knows she got four kids and a gd and he came it's a woman me. it's a yeah, woman it's she a doesn't woman. know anything know. about how to succeed yeah so he came to me one day with his business ended up going down he said hey you was pretty good at giving me suggestions won't you start a business there's a lot of opportunities for women out there you know you can get contracts and i was like for real you know, nobody never told me I could do anything. You know, I had four kids by the time I was 22 and I dropped out in the 10th grade. So I was like, you think I can do this? And he said, yeah, it's up to you. If you succeed, you succeed. If you fail, you fail. And I was like, nobody never told me I had a choice. And so Steve, I started this business. My first contract was with Habitat for Humanity. So I'm getting major contracts in my first year, but about third, six months into it, my ex-husband was like, the, the verbal abuse and mental abuse. I'm like, why are you doing this? Why are you being mean to me? And he said, how do you come into my field and outdo me? And so the abuse started and I didn't understand this. And I'm, you know, for the first time in my life as a young lady, I was liking who I was becoming. I had office spaces, I had company vans. And he came to me and said, hey, 
if you want me and at this time i had two kids with him which made me have six i had four when i met him i had two little kids with him he said if you want me you would give up this business and go find a little regular job somewhere and i was like you know my wings were just beginning to fly you know and and, and it got clipped i'm like what he like you want this marriage you would give up the business and i gave up the business because he had already been verbally and, and, and emotionally you know abusive to it. i'm like you know what i'm just gonna let it go i don't want to do this in the first place and when i gave up you know because it was i was good being a stay- no, that's, that's you right. know, I was good being a stay-at-home mom but when i gave up the business he decided he didn't want me anymore and that left i i could not think i was too i didn't even know i was used to being rejected for what people consider doing wrong having kids at an early age dropping out of school I was not used to being rejected for doing good in life. And so mentally that kind of messed me up. So when that marriage ended, that's how we became homeless. Yeah, you know, and it's funny, we talked about this earlier too, which was uh, how people can have such an ego that nobody else can surpass them. Uh, like, you know, we talked about how celebrities, a lot of times the movie stars, those kind of people break up because one partner becomes a lot more successful than another. And they say, what's, well, you know, that was the jealousy. And you're like, how could you be jealous if you married for the right reason, yes. right? You should be supportive of your partner, no matter what's going on in their life. And that's what uh, uh, Dr. Latarsha really struggled with was this, the person that she kind of respected Yes. Um, who said, I need you to go out and do this. And then she went out and did it. <laughs> and then he went, hey, wait, wait a minute. This is not good. And you go, I, you know, and, and we all know people like that. Um, yeah. I've, we've got a couple friends and they talk over each other all the time. They're competing constantly yes. to tell the story first. And it's like, what difference? I mean, I, I make that mistake. I'll interrupt my wife. She's telling the story and I'll go, oh, tell him this. And she looks at me like, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, go ahead, honey, go ahead. By then she's ticked off. She goes, no, go ahead and tell the story. I go, ah, <laughs> right. But it's 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 in kind of fun. I mean, I know that she's a tweak that I butted in, but it's not like what you went through. It's not like with those people going, I don't want you to be successful yeah. more than me. And you're like, how does that happen, right? But you, uh, then what are your? You got six kids who are doing really well. So tell us again what they're doing. Well, I tell you, I mean, so I found myself home. We was homeless for years. And in the beginning, I'm thinking suicide and legacy. You know, being home as a pastor, I often pose the question, what happens when your struggle outlasts your strength? We all can go through something for a couple of days, weeks, months. But what happens when it becomes years? So being homeless for four years, it started well my mental. I had to keep six children from the school to prison pipeline, drugs, gangs, defects for coming, taking my kids. And when I say homeless, we talking about cars, shelters, abandoned house, empty house, uh, scraping our money for hotels. Matter of fact, when I rolled in college in 2007, we was living in a board up house at squatters. But I came to my six children back then, and there was two in high school, two in middle school, and two in elementary school. And I said, well, look, I'm, the only thing I had, here I am, I'm an African-American woman in the big city of Atlanta, homeless in the streets of Atlanta. I told my kids, I said, look, I don't have a lot to give you all materially. The only thing I have to give you guys is to sh- is to love you unconditionally and to show you how to serve and they was like mother what are you talking about we don't have anything how can we help anybody i took my the the last little key i had i said all i have to offer you i'm gonna show you guys how to give back at your lord's i believe if i show you this i've given you a strong foundation to build on the com- to become great leaders steve they mama and complain but they they helped me put the events on you That's know what kids are supposed to do they wanted the stuff, they, they wanted the clothes, the shoes. I didn't have that. I'm yeah. talking about legacy. And they were like, later we want one, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't want legacies. I want Jordans. I want Jordans. I want hair. <laughs> I want clothes. But to my surprise, huh, they turned around. My oldest son just turned 32. He came to me his senior in high school. He said, Mother, by what you showed me, my way of giving back is serving the United States Marine Corps. He served 10 and a half years before he medically retired. And he graduated two weeks ago with his associates in business. My other son became thank him, thank him for his service. That's thank for sure. you. My other son became a caretaker. My oldest daughter, um, she's an EMT, a licensed pharmacy tech, and she's a senior in college. My daughter, um, Leticia, she joined the army three years ago, and she graduated last year with her bachelor's in human services. Wow. My 
Night, my 20 year old daughter now is a four time published author. She's a um, a spoken word artist. She's a serial entrepreneur. She has a photography business, a website business, and she just created a tabletop game for children. And my last child, Steve, his name is Omega. People, there's no more coming up Omega. Omega is the last and the end. <laughs> but Omega just graduated from high school um, about three weeks ago. He's a youth leader and he started about six months ago into a business where he's learning investing and trading. And so that one key that I had, my six children took it. Now everybody's 18 and over, so I'm just enjoying myself now. <laughs> uh, we, uh, we talked briefly earlier. I said, you know, uh, when I was on speaking circuit, uh, when my son's 34 now, and when he was 15, somebody said, don't make your son get a job. Instead, pay him to read a book and do a book report. And I railed at that. I went, no, no, no. They got to know the value of money by working for it. And then it made sense for what he said, because he said, uh, you're going to let him go to work at McDonald's or Burger King where the people who are really working there are trying their bar hardest not to work. You know, they don't want to do a great job. They just want to get the business done and get out. And I thought about that. I went, that's true. So I paid my son to read books of my choosing, uh, things like uh, Millionaire Next Door, Acres of Diamonds, and uh, of course, Robert Kiyosaki at that point in time, which was uh, uh, Cash Flow Quadrant. And he ended up forming a, a high school group called future millionaires. Now, I, the, pro, the thing probably dissolved when he left high school, but he went on to become a, a bartender. He went to University of Iowa, uh, became a bartender. And I was like, really, that's what you did with your education? Thanks a lot. And but he's he learned to use money in such a way that now he travels the world with his wife and they travel the world because as a bartender, he can work anywhere in the world. And so they've got enough money at 34, 35 years of age to travel do what they want to do. And most Americans don't know how to work with money. We were briefly talking about how most Americans struggle, um, even if they're making good money, they don't know how to keep some for themselves so that they can help other people, right? Yes, yes, oh my. But you know what, I like that, you know, and when you said the bar to my thing is once, one thing I told my six children, I don't care what you do, as long as you're not a menace to society, you be the if you're the janitor, you be the best doggone janitor you could be. Is is because we're all needed. Every every aspect of every we need the janitors, the the housekeepers. Everybody is needed, you know. And so, um, I'm just excited. I, I don't know. I don't know if we need more bartenders though. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? If if that makes them, you know, bartenders, I, I like to see them sometimes um, do the thing. They know how oh, to do their do thing. They know how to, you know. But that's right. Whatever makes them happy, happy. you know. That's that's the key. And we talked briefly before about uh, uh, Beyonce getting a $30 million uh, Rolls Royce with her husband. And we said, what could somebody do with $30 million? She could have, instead, she could have built, rebuilt an entire school system. She could yes. have helped everybody in every aspect of an entire school system and changed hundreds of lives with that $30 million instead of buying a car. So if you get lucky enough, whoever's listening to this, to buy a $30 million car, instead, help a school system. Yeah. Would you yeah, do that? Yeah. But yeah, so uh, Dr. Latarsha was talking about how her family has has really blossomed and grown, even though she struggled all that time. They, she taught them values, yes. and that's a hard thing to teach, especially when you're down. How do you teach your kids values? And we said America could change if all of us would take her strength and start to teach values back into our system, right, Dr. Latarsha? I, I definitely agree with you. I think um, for me. Uh, right today, although everyone is um, 19 to 32, I have no, my kids, can, <clears throat> no, no matter who it is, I don't care where they go, who they come in contact with, I have, you know, you, you know, some, I know they're not going to embarrass themselves or you, they know how to carry themselves. And I taught them uh, the principles of serving leadership, how to carry yourself. Even when my back was against the wall as a homeless mother, I never sold myself out to get ahead. I never did drugs or, or drinking or party. I just stood the storm and I just kept going. And so one thing, another thing I did, we were talking about generational curse breakers. Um, when you give up doing your, you never know who's tied to you. You know, and when you give up, like last year, right before Christmas, I was able to see my nine-year-old grandson become a published author. So now my children nine, nine. he's nine nine. nine. I don't, so he me and said, I, don't think I, I think I was still playing in mud puddles when I was nine. What is that about? Yeah, he was like, Grandma, can you help me write a book? So I got with his mom and my daughter and um, but, but I'm gonna interrupt. Yeah. That's what that's really key. Grandma, can you help me write a book? Well, what nine year old says, Hey, would you you know, 
no, they don't say, hey, would you help me write a book? Unless they are emulating someone else. So you and your daughter yes. are authors. So of course yes. the young one's going to go, I could, can I do that? You see, what we show them is what, what they, they learn, right? What they, my, oh my goodness. Matter of fact, that was so, when my son was in the, um, in 2007, I mean, 2017, when I was running for city council, to go to your point, I got a call from my son. And you know, when they get grown, you rarely hear from them unless it's something they just want to talk, you know? That's right. And so when he called, his voice was kind of a little stern and kind of, I was just coming from a forum. Um, and I said, son, can I help you? He said, mother, would you do me the honors of coming to Tennessee and pin me at my ceremony to Staff Sergeant Holden? And immediately I, I just start crying. And I, and, and I said, son, why would you choose me? Because I still have residue left. You can be out of a situation, but the residue, you know, I was the homeless mother and I thought he was going to call my mom, my dad, my sisters. He was like, no, why would I call them? He said, mother, had it not been for you. Where would we be? He said, I know people laughing at you. Nobody will help you. The joke was on you. He said, you could have did anything. You could start doing drugs, drinking. You could have left us, gave us up. He said, but you did nothing and you kept the pace. And yes, would you do me the honors of coming to Tennessee and pin me at my ceremony? That's and so cool. That was that was so, I mean, when oh I went there, that was cool. That was an experience I'll never forget. Yeah, you know, and that's, uh, I think that's a lot of times when we talk on this show is, we talk about what difference can people make you know i know when they're talking about the politics today and they're talking about this what difference what can we do to make a difference you know what you can do you can be honest you can be uh dis disciplined uh, you can hold good character you can hold other people accountable yeah. so you hold yourself i mean um we always talk about one friend of ours who all all he does is uh tell stories about how people bring something to him and he has to fix everything it's never his fault it's never his problem he's never created anything but he fixes all these other things and you're like no who make yourself accountable mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. uh, i know this is a problem you know that's one of the things in in ended marriage and ended relationships is it's their fault you know what there is no fault there's only mistakes that happen because we don't know how to deal with each other so always 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 accept responsibility for at least half, if not all, yeah. of a situation you're in so that you can make it. She's accepted. Dr. Latarsha has accepted that she was homeless. And she said, I didn't know what to do at times. I didn't have any idea. What, but she kept the faith. Faith. Yes. And that was important. That was important. And I want to let whoever's listening or watching, you know, I off, as a pastor, I often pose this question, what happens when your struggle outlasts your strength? Because we all humanly probably can go through something for a couple of weeks, months, um, you know, days. But what happens when it becomes years? And so for me, being homeless with six kids that I'm trying to keep from the school to prison pipeline, drugs, gangs, running away, sex, you know, anything. Because at that point, we're in a very vulnerable situation. But the journey got so hard for me mentally. Because I'm trying to keep six people above flow while I was drowning. I didn't have nobody pointing to me, but I'm pointing to my kids. You can do this. We're going to make it. I know it's hard right now, but I remember walking to a hospital here in Riverdale, Georgia. I was not raised in the church, but this is where I met God. I walked into a hospital here in Riverdale, Georgia. I remember going through them glass doors. I went to the lady at the desk. I said, ma'am, I can't do this anymore. I was looking frazzled, hair a little while. She said, ma'am, are you saying you want to commit suicide? I said, yes, ma'am. That's what I'm saying. They admitted me to the hospital for a week for observation. And on that floor, they had a padded room. And I went to the lady at the desk. I said, ma'am, can I go into that room? She said, ma'am, you're no threat to anybody. I said, I know, but I need to go in there. And when they allowed me to go in that room once a day, I would drop down to my knees and cry out, God, are you there? Please help me. I'm scared and I'm lost. I don't know what to do. But when they released me, although my situation did not immediately turn around, I knew something was different. And before I knew it, I had matriculated through college with my associates, my bachelor's, my MBA. But when I got into the PhD program now for leadership study, and I did want to bunny jump up to heaven and hop <laughs> out of me. <laughs> you know, only, only God can can do that. You know, it, it wasn't so for those who say I don't, I didn't have the money. I want to let you know how God works. I'm a I'm a Christian, so I I, I cannot take nothing for myself. Statistically. There was no way we were supposed to make it out. Not just me, let alone six kids. I had no family support. I'm born and raised in Atlanta, so my family is here. 
I, I had no connections to anybody that was influenced, influential or affluence. I had no, you know, I had nothing. Only by the grace of God, when I decided to take a step, he took two steps towards me. Nothing happens overnight. I was telling Steve just a couple, um, June 13th, I appeared on To Tell the Truth with Anthony Anderson. You know, a Hollywood producer reached out to me, but this is 14 years later. Nothing happens overnight. Success is not going to come knocking the day two when you start doing what you're doing. And a lot of times people give up because, well, I've been doing this business for six months. And that true success is a, is a process. And had God not took me through that homeless journey, I would not be who, who I am today. You know, and that's really part of what we have to understand is that nothing happens overnight. You know, I'm a professional speaker and I teach other people how to be speakers and trainers. And there's a lot of people out there who say, wow, we can make you a speaker overnight. And you're like, yeah. no, you can't. No, you can't. You know, I don't care what anybody tells you, yes. you know, you could be a pretty darn good speaker and they can't make you a speaker overnight. I had a guy a couple, three years ago uh, who called me up and said uh, uh, he uh, heard I could make people you know, great speakers. I went, oh, great. Thanks a lot for calling me. And, and I said, so how can I help you? And he said, well, he was miserable at his car sales job. And I went, OK. And he said, but I sell luxury cars and blah, blah, blah. And I make over three hundred thousand dollars a year. He said, but I don't have any time of my own. I can't spend time with my family. He said, I heard uh, you can make me a speaker. I said, well, yeah. And he said, well, how soon could I make $300,000? <laughs> I said, well, it'll probably take three or four years. And he went, oh, no, no, but you can't do it this year. I don't want it. I said, well, I know I can't do it this year for you. And he hung up the phone. Boom, gone. Right. But I, that also says a lot because I learned then I don't want people who just want to speak for money. Yes. I want people who have a message to share, to change people's lives. Dr. Latarsha, you can tell, absolutely wants to change people's mm -hmm. minds. They, he, she wants to change your future. She wants to help you, not just you grow, but you, your families, the people mm -hmm. around you, you know. So, Dr. Latarsha, can you tell us how to contact you? Yes. Um, you can reach me at my website, www.drlatarshaholden.info. So use that at, but it's dot info. Um, and that's D-R-L-A-T-A-R-S-H-A -A -A Holden, H-O-L-D-E-N dot info. If you want to book an empowerment coaching session, you can email me at latarshaholden at yahoo.com. I'm on uh, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, LinkedIn. I just got on TikTok, trying to inspire you. <laughs> oh my goodness! I keep thinking I, I'm on TikTok, but I think I've only done two things in like the last six months. But it's yeah, it's it's like we should be doing that, shouldn't we? Because a lot of people watch it. I watch it. Yeah. You know? so yeah. There's fun things and there's interesting things, and I've learned a ton from the people on you know from how to carve a watermelon to you know how to drive a yeah. car type thing. But I mean, there's everybody wants to help other people in lots of some people just you know you i love the ladies who just get on and go oh look at me you know <laughs> and and they get a hundred thousand followers but i love the people who want to help other people the people who share what they have for knowledge share what they have for a little little like you said how to carve a watermelon or how to yeah. eat a year of corn i love those things because those are people who genuinely just want to help other people yep they love the, the notoriety they'd all love to get a hundred thousand people to watch them but it's it, it is to help other people. And if you find Dr. Latarsha on TikTok and uh, uh, <laughs> what, how do they call it? Join, uh, subscribe. Subscribe, yes. Subscribe. Uh, a, a like, I think it's like or follow. I'm new to it. I, I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know. Go there and find us. You know, we're sitting yes. on TikTok and we might only have one or two things, but go ahead and follow us or join us or whatever you got to do. But yeah, that's uh, it's really fascinating to me how there are people like Dr. Latarsha out there who want to make a difference to you, who want to help you change who you are. I mean, that's the reason we're in this. The reason I teach people to speak is because I've learned that, I, I just learned this year, is that being better at public speaking reduces the odds of somebody being abused in any kind of relationship because they've grown in confidence and they've grown in their ability to speak up for themselves. And so I, that just added to my fire. You know, I'm like, you know, I knew it would change and help you in your business. I knew it will change and help you in your company. But the fact that it can help people from being abused was just like, no way, that's so cool, right? <laughs> and Dr. Latarsh is out there absolutely trying to help you grow and so dr dr Latarsha, what um you know what what do you want to help people with what what is your primary motivation 
Well, first is, is the mental shift. Um, what I realized, the first thing I remember, my undergrad professor told the class that the world belongs to those who are disciplined. If you lack the art of discipline, you will start something and you will rarely see it come to completion. Um, being homeless, I dropped out in 10th grade, had four kids by the time I was 22. So I was definitely somebody who was not organized, disciplined at all. But being homeless for four years and I rode in college as a full-time student, matter of fact, I was living in a board up a house at squatters when I rode in college. So I definitely had to learn the art of discipline, time management, goal setting. Um, the process is not easy. I just want, because a mental shift, if everybody can just do a mental shift at any whim, we all will be living our dreams full throttle and, and just going, it's, it's not easy. It's painful because what you're doing, you're tearing down those old habits and old ways that is rooted in your deep in your subconscious. And especially you later, the older you get, the you know later in life, especially it's it's hard. It's, yeah, don't tell me what to do. Don't tell me what to do. Or I've been this way all my life. You have that attitude. A mental shift will be. But for me, I had twelve eyes watching me. I knew nobody was coming to save us. So I started the process. And my thing is, if I can get you to change the mental shift, so I develop eight steps to get you to change the mental shift. Now it's a process. And the thing about it is you're going to be tested. It's not you're going to do the eight steps and boom. No, no, no. Anytime you got to pull away from an old way of doing something, old lifestyle, it's going to be a process. But then that's how you develop discipline. Because the longer you work your process over years, you start to see results. So when I came out of my journey after 12 years, you know, I didn't start. I'm going I'm to run for city council. I'm going to go get a doctorate. No, the more I just kept going my story kind of um, unfolded itself along the way i just decided you know what i said steve people gonna talk about you when you're homeless when you're doing good when you got money we, i just decided to chase purpose and not perfection oh i love that you know when you're chasing purpose you're not if i had way to everything was perfect i would have never did anything enrolling in college living in a board up house with my children was definitely not the best situation for me to talk about going back to school i just went back to the last place that i gave up on myself and that was one of them besides when I did with my ex-husband with the business. Chase purpose. The time will never be right. And when I chase purpose, I want to encourage you on this. What I had to realize, most people who are telling you, you ain't going to do it. You can't do it. Girl, you come from this. Man, you come from that place. Or you've been this way so long. I've never saw a, a person who has business about themselves, that's going after their dreams and goals, telling another person they can't do something. If you look back over your life, the people who are doing the most talking are those on the sidelines who are too scared to get off the porch. That's right. That's get right. the You'll never see somebody who's making moves telling you what you can't do. It's always those aunts, uncles, mom, dad, sisters, and brothers who are too scared to live out loud in their true self. That's right. And so that's what I realized. So chase purpose and not profession. And nobody can beat you when you're being authentically you. There is no competition. That is so cool. That is, I mean, that is really true, too. I mean, I do a, a whole talk on uh, basement people versus balcony people. Yeah. The balcony people are lifting you up. The basement mm -hmm. people are pulling you down. And of course, I always say you've got the people on the porch who are yeah. in the middle, you know, because mm -hmm. they think they're balcony people. Yes. and are lifting you up but what they're doing is pulling you down you know it's yeah. like why do you want to do that you failed yeah. the last time you did that and they always say well i'm just trying to protect you yeah yes. yank, yeah yank, yank. but it's interesting what you said and, and i think it's really important that we get this out there too is so many people parents today are not disciplining their children you know yeah. they just let them run they want to be their friend right. you can still be your kid's friend i'm the best of friends with my son now at 34. But you know what? If you teach them discipline, I don't I don't think most people understand. Every kid in the world pushes limits. You yeah. can say you're not supposed to go out after this time when you're 16 and they'll of course sneak out. And you got to discipline them from that because they're trying to learn limits. If you say there are no limits, go out and play, go out and party. My mom used to say there's nothing good happens after midnight. That's right. And if you watch when all the shootings happen and all the killings happen mm -hmm. and the stabbings, it's usually one, two, three, four o'clock in the morning. And and it happens because we aren't disciplining our You don't have to beat them. You don't have to spank them. You have to discipline them so they learn their own limits. And that's vital. I, I guarantee you, Dr. Latarsha disciplined her children because they turned into amazing adults. And I, you know what? Oh, my goodness. And I, I'm going to see, we joke. I think they might have got 
maybe two whooping spankings. I, I, I wasn't big. I'm the oldest of three girls. So I wasn't raised where that was my dad. We didn't really get spanking. So I, if certain things I took from my parents, I'm like, okay, that wasn't the way I was raised. But one thing I did do that worked on me when I was little was the look, Steve. You, the look. <laughs> The look. You, the look. The, 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 the thing is, I tell people, y'all try to do it when they're 14, 15. That's too late. You got to get those little bookers when they when they two and one. You got to scare yeah. them up then. You know, I didn't have to spank my kids. I didn't have to do it just, but they knew, I'm. you know, now they're, you know, late 20s, early 30s. We might joke around, but it's still a boundary. If I feel they're trying to test it, you know, just say a little something. Like, hey, hey, I'm not your friend now. You know, we, we good. We rolling. But you gotta that's why i just released my mini, mini parenting guide so i can share some of the customers yes you got a mini parenting guide yes i just uh released this a couple of months ago so where i share some of my wisdom after 30 some years of raising kids and where do i get that all of my books are available on amazon and on my website if you want to sign copy and her web shot web shite, her web <laughs> her website is dr latarsha holden at info dot info dot info yes so wait, wait. Yeah. say it again dr latarsha holden dot info dot info no at no at no symbol at. no all right doctor so it's like instead of dot com it's dot info, dot info. yes dr yes. latarsha holden dot info so, uh, so and and it's dr l-a-t-a-r-s-h-a H O L D E N. Boy, I'm telling you, if you're a, a young parent watching this, you need to get yes. that book. Holy yes. cow. Yes. So I can grow. And it's really, if you're listening to this as opposed to watching us, um, it's a really cool cover. Uh, so yes. it's uh, Nurture Me So I Can Grow is what the, the title is. So yes. I'm telling you, you need to pick up a copy. And that's so cool. <laughs> yeah. And, but I, I agree with you. The, the, too many people want to be their children's friends. They got friends, they're going to have friends. I'm not cool with right today if my kids, I mean, even though my kids know they're still boundary set and they're grown, but I didn't, I, I didn't have to do a lot of spanking. I think when you raise them with love, one thing I ask my children, you know, because they kind of listen to me and my older son, when he was in the Marine, he said, mom, I think the reason why we listen to your guidance, you didn't tell us to do something and you did the opposite. Oh yeah. So, Lead by example. So you was leading by if you didn't you didn't tell us not to stay out and we didn't see you stay out. You didn't tell us not to drink and we didn't see you. So because I led by example, they was you know able to really um take in what I was saying. And so that's yeah. why I'm big on leadership. I released last year my book on leadership principles. This is for emerging and inspiring leaders because we have so many public successes and private failures. And so I wrote this for people who want to go into leadership. You're thinking about taking on leadership positions, but what's going to happen when you, you know, come to a, a roadblock when you have to choose integrity over money, uh, you know, oh. you know, just different things. And so I talked from a place where I ran for city council and I had people come to me and say, Hey, I know this person, that person, we go out a couple of times. I can introduce you. And I said, no way. <laughs> My thing is because how you start something is how you're going to have to do to finish it. You're going to have to keep that thing going if you want it. And I said, God brought me this far. God has seen me all the way through. And so how is it that you can able to have integrity when your back is against the wall? I believe that's a true test of leadership. When your back is against the wall, is we all can shine when we're on top and we've been interviewed and we're on magazine covers. But what happens when you have been tested behind closed doors? So That's can- really good. That's really good information. As we're getting right to the end of this, okay. uh, I want to really impress upon everybody listening that uh, the discipline part is really vital. And if you watch what's happening in America today, almost all of it comes from greed. Yes. If you watch the TV shows where everybody is compromised, we were watching one show just the other night, and and the guy says, uh, and I don't know, he's a power guy in the city, but he said, I got dirt on everybody. And why is that? Why is it that this person has dirt on everybody? Because for some reason, when you start to move up, you have to make deals. I guarantee you there's not a politician out there in in Washington today who hasn't given their heart and soul away to stay in power. Um, A lot of them go for one or two terms and then they're forced out or voted out because they didn't give up their values. And so we have to start looking at what we are um, offering to our children from our own government. Yeah. And we have to go back to term limits. That's my own uh, 
touch in there, but we have to go back to integrity. Yes. Don't take them. I, I tell people, um, Dr. Latarsha, I ask, I said, is bribery legal where you at? Can I bribe you to go do something? And you say, no, no, you can't. Because most of us would lose our jobs or most of us would, yes. would go to jail. But for some reason in the United States government, we have legal bribery yes. and they're called lobbyists, mm -hmm. you know, where these people are paid a million dollars a year to go give millions to the to the politicians you know whether it's a car or whether it's a, a vacation or no matter what, but they're paid to give money away and and it's a shame that uh, those are the examples that our, our families have to live with so as we wrap this up do you have any words of wisdom as we close this out dr latarsha Yes, I want to encourage you that um, first, God did not magically change my life. I had to be a willing participant in my own deliverance. So you can cry, you can you can wish all you want, but you have to give God something to work with. Get in the ring, fight for yourself. You deserve to be here just like the next person. Go after your dreams. Beyonce has a song out. I uh, I like. I'm not a fan, but I like this song. Um, I'm here. I was here. And the, 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 the nature of the song is that when she leave this world, the world will know she was here. What are you doing today that when your time here expires, the world will know you was here? What is your legacy? Oh, I love that. And with that, we'll wrap up this episode of uh, Speaker Talks. You can reach me at steve at stevesapato.com. Uh, of course, you can go to my website, stevesapatoseminars.com. But I want to encourage you to take it, what you uh, listen to today, uh, work it in your own life, uh, whether it's the discipline, whether it's the integrity, whether it's how to raise your children. All of that is vital to the success that you are looking for in your life. And I uh, success to me is the progressive realization of a worthwhile dream or goal. You might achieve one and you're going to go right back out and try and achieve the next goal. So it's a progressive realization. You're always going to that next realization to find your success, whether it's happiness, whether it's love, you need to find your own. So I'm Steve Sapato. You've been listening to Dr. Latarsha Holden and Steve Sapato on the, the Speaker Talks podcast. God bless. <laughs>